Hey guys, welcome to the lab. Uh, Leon here. Um, really special episode for you guys this evening. Uh, Mark Manchaka, actor, director, personality, um, has joined me in the lab to create some hats. This is part one. Um, we'll start by showing you guys the first and the last hat we made. The first hat um, is really cool. Uh, it's kind of based on his past and his upbringing is in San Angelo, Texas. We got to make a really interesting hat there. The second hat that we'll be showing is a hat based off of a movie that he's gonna be in, um, and it comes out this this weekend. So the creator, there's a lot of hype behind it. Uh, the director of Star Wars Rogue One uh, worked on it. It's, it's a huge uh, deal to me um, that we can do this. And I uh, greatly appreciate Mark for taking the time out and spending it with me to uh, be on the show. So you might recognize him uh, from Ozark. He played Russ Langmore uh, in season one. Uh, he's been in like Homeland and directed his own movies and, and just, just been around. So to get someone like him um, that's like into hats to create something has been really cool and really fun. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. And uh, yeah, um, I'll be here at the end to kind of recap uh, everything. So hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you guys are liking the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And again, shout out to our sponsor uh, of this episode, uh, Pro Image Sports Colorado. They've been a great partner of mine. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy. And I'll be back later. Peace. Hey guys, welcome to the lab. Um, we are back with some more exclusive content. We are joined by actor Mark Manchaka. Uh, really excited to have you in the lab today. How are you doing today, Mark? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Joe's uh, spoken very highly of you, and <laughs> um, he knows my, my love of hats and uh, always supplies me with some, some surprises in, in the mail, even though we live 10 minutes away. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, so uh, like you said, you're a big liker, uh, lover of hats. Like um, most times, I see you out out and about. You're usually wearing a hat, so really excited to get you in the lab, to so we can kind of create something for you to wear more often. But uh, let's do a little bit of background. So for people who don't know, uh, uh, you grew up in Texas. Whereabouts did you grow up in Texas? I grew up in San Angelo, Texas, uh, which okay. is out like kind of West Texas. It's the area that like Friday Night Lights was based on. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. It's got its own beauty. Uh, it's very flat and dusty and uh, a bunch of mesquite trees, but um, <laughs> there's, there's something raw and rugged and beautiful about it. Nice. Um, what, as a kid, um, did you play a lot of sports? I play, yeah, I grew up playing uh, soccer and football. Uh, and then I, I played baseball up until high school, uh, basketball. And then in, in high school, I just played soccer and football. Football nice. was kind of, <clears throat> it's kind of uh, king out there. Yeah. So um, that was my, my kind of main, main thing. Nice. Um, in, in, in terms of, uh, transitioning, um, to, to an actor, like what kind of made you, um, want to get into that world? Uh, it's kind of, I mean, I, I always thought I was going to go, go to college. I went to Texas A&M. I thought I was going to go to college and go back home and do something back there, uh, get married and, um, start a little life. And, uh. I got to college and realized that I was not very good in <laughs> business or economics. Uh, still not to this day, but um, I, and I ended up, I, I kind of, I, I had a, I always kind of had a feeling that I wanted to do it mm -hmm. in high school, but with football, you know, being in West Texas, it, it wasn't the cool thing to do. And uh, so I just played, I played sports and never did it. And then I saw 
the movie that like made me want to do it was Dead Poet Society. Okay. And uh, after that, I was just kind of like, I want to do whatever those people are making me feel. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, in in terms of like your career, you've played like a wide range of characters. Is there like a particular role that stands out to you as uh, either like the most challenging or the most memorable? Um, I mean, I think there's there's uh, there have been challenging ones and memorable ones along the way for different reasons. Um, I think when I did Homeland, it was, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of sparked the fire in me for more of the like character, um, actor roles. Um, and it was also, you know, it was, it was, it was emotionally challenging and I, I learned a lot from that job, even though the first season I did one episode um, it was kind of one of those things that I had to go in and give it all I had so I had a, I had a very long monologue in it and um, it was uh, yeah it was really cool and then you know down the way I like Ozark was one that I don't think I'll ever forget uh, yeah. just you know had some incredible writing on that show. And um, that's where I met Jason Bateman. And then that led to The Outsider, which I did with him. And that, I would say The Outsider was, The Outsider was one of the most like taxing roles that I've done uh, just cause my character was pretty pretty alone and um messed up and yeah there was a lot of living in that in that world uh and i and i learned a lot from from both ozark and outsider um so yeah i would say kind of those three that's awesome like um for 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 you guys it almost felt like uh, as soon as like it it kind of hit and it became such a must watch part of like anyone's TV in terms of Ozark. Like, like what was it like just kind of um, having that kind of just like that switch flipped? Cause it was like, it was like nothing. They, they don't like working with Netflix, right? They, they don't really advertise a lot. So it just becomes something where it just gets picked up socially and then it becomes something that like instantly everyone has to be a part of or, or, or watch, right? Like, is there anything um, were you involved with anything like that, that that kind of prepared you for what would what would happen so quickly? Uh, no, no, I, <laughs> I, I hadn't been. And, you know, you, you never you really never know. I, I, yeah, I knew that I really liked the the writing was so great on those arc. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with Jason being kind of the captain of the ship and um, and a the best that I've ever worked with as far as like, you know, he was kind of the, the dad yeah. of the set and everything and treats everyone very, very well. And I mean like over the top generous and knows who everybody is. Uh, I think all those things combined came together and we, everybody loved doing the show and then somehow it became uh, it became a hit and yeah. it was, uh, I will say it was fun. I had, a, I did have a hat from the first season of Ozark. I mean, I still have it, but it was, you know, usually when you get rap gifts, uh, they, they usually say something like, you know, they'll have the show name <clears throat> and then like season three or whatever, you know, whatever season it is. And uh, Jason gave all the, he's given me two of the best rap gifts I've ever gotten. Uh, the one for the first season was, it was an, it was a black hat and it had, it had the, you know, the, the symbol that came up at the, the beginning that had yeah. the, 
the O and then the different symbols in there. And that's all it was. It was that. And then it just had people's initials on the side. And so nobody knew what it was. It didn't look like a, it didn't look like you were walking around town, like wearing a hat that was like, I'm, I'm an actor and I did this show. (laughs) Uh, And it was a great hat. And unfortunately I, I didn't really wear it as much after the show came out when people finally figured out what it was. Um, and then he got us some uh, custom Converse for the last season, maybe. I can't remember. That had all, it was just all the different symbols, but you can't really tell what they are. They just look like yeah. cool Converse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and where, where, what was the, the beginning of that question? I, I think I went on a tangent. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, um, I, I guess, like, because you're used to, like, the normal, I guess, uh, run where, like, you know, you, you work on a movie or you work on a show and then there's advertisement on that. But, like, I feel like a lot of the Netflix stuff is, like, they, they don't do much in terms of, like, advertising. It just becomes part of um, what's out there and then people watch it. And then it like, it just almost has, like, a a viralness to it and then like eventually it just becomes something where people just do it for you either they you know advertise online like oh you got to watch ozark or it just becomes must watch tv i guess yeah um yeah i guess they don't really prepare you for 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 that switch to kind of happen so it's kind of like a, no but uh, fortunately i kind of uh i still kind of fly under the radar i mean people mm-hmm. would be like i know you from something <laughs> yeah but I don't hear it. It happened the other day at the coffee shop. A guy said that he was like, he was like, are you an actor? I said, I said, yes, sir. And I've seen you in a lot of things, but I don't, I, you're, I'm, I'm not, I can't remember your name. And I said, that's the best way to go. Yeah. Uh, just like fly under the radar. Yeah. Um, of course people know, like will recognize me from Ozark and it's, uh, I mean, I love meeting people and um, it's, I, I, it's never a hassle for me, but uh, but I also kind of like flying under the radar to be like, oh, he's that guy from that thing. Yeah. That, but we don't really know who he is. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, you must get called by by the characters a lot, right? Like, like yeah. Even, even that that's gotta happen. Um, yeah. But in terms of acting, you've also directed. So, like, uh, how how's your experience as an actor? kind of influence your approach to directing or even vice versa uh i think i think mainly um you know when when i did my film we kind of just chose actors that we knew could do what we wanted them to do and it was more just like maybe pushing them a little bit more in, in, in a, in a direction that they were going. Um, and I, I think, I think it's, as far as like translating it into directing, it was, uh, you know, it was giving ideas and letting the actor do what, just giving them the freedom to do what they wanted to do with that. Yeah. Um, which is also like having worked with, you know, I've worked with uh, a lot of different directors and Bateman is like that. Like I'm not throw out, throw out an idea that just gives you like a little nugget to be like, Oh, I could try that. And then he's, you know, he's very hands-on, but at the same time, very hands-off in, in that he gives you the freedom to take that and do what you want with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of, you know, it's always exciting to see what that actor brings to the table or to the to the scene uh, after that happens. When you, I just don't, uh, I, I think it's better to not know exactly what they're going to do because it may be, it's probably going to be 50 times better than what you were thinking. Just give them the freedom with, your little bit of, uh, you know, uh, a word or a, a phrase and then let them go with it. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you for doing that. Um, let's kind of pull up what we're doing today. So 
we're going to, um, the first picture you had uh, sent over was this hat. So can you tell us a little bit, um, a little bit of a backstory behind this hat right here? Uh, so that hat, I, I got off of, a, I got it off of a farmer I used to work for mm -hmm. when I was 16 years ago. So that was 32 years ago. I got that hat. Um, I washed it once about 10 years ago. <laughs> so that's why it's a little bit white still now. Yeah. Uh, but it was one of those things where we were driving out to the farm and I didn't have a hat that day. And, uh, I said, you know, Mr. Ball, can I borrow a hat? And he was like, oh, just take that, take one of those in the back seat. And I grabbed that one and it stayed with me for 32 years. Uh, and kind of funnily enough, I just, I kind of, I kind of put it to uh, not, not to bed, but I, I was going to retire the hat years ago. Yeah. And my wife and I, um, we bought uh, a little ranch upstate New York and with this strike going on, the only thing we've done is like, just we've been up there and I've been out, you know, clearing brush, cutting down trees, uh, weed whacking, doing, you know, doing all this kind of stuff. And I've, and I've, I've ran across that hat, um, I don't know, about a month or so ago, month or two ago. And, uh, and that's the only hat I wear up there now. And so it kind of, it kind of came back around nice. in my life after a, a number of years, not ever thinking that I would own a little ranch in upstate New York. <laughs> I didn't even, I, I don't think I ever even thought they existed in New York, but, um, it's I I have to say that every time I put that thing on, it's like a, I, there's a connection to home for it uh, yeah. for me, and um, to Mr. Ball, who I, you know, he's been gone for um, for many years now. But uh, the things that I learned from him growing up, um, you know, him making me work my tail off and uh probably not liking it at the time but now appreciating what he um gave to me in in doing that and uh you know i i think you know being act being an actor is not uh, like i didn't have anybody in the business that i knew i didn't have any connections and i it says i don't know it, cheesy or not it, it does say something to me about the fact that like i came up to new york and i had to do this i had to just like pound the pavement until i got a job and uh which was not easy and and i you know i in in a lot of ways i thank him for 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 the the shit he made me do that probably translated into what i was doing in my early days in new york yeah <clears throat> yeah that's awesome that's awesome all right so let's uh let's do our best to kind of uh recreate this one and give you something that you can kind of work into your rotation uh, a little bit so uh here the thing that sticks out to me um here is the f from the ford so we had gone through a couple of different F logos. So Fayetteville has a really nice uh, F logo. So I'm going to pull it for you right here. It's I'm going to put my glasses on. All right. I'll make it bigger. I'll make it bigger for you. But, yeah, uh, that's cool. Uh, so we the cool thing is, is we can kind of zoom in and stuff. So Fayetteville has this... Uh, F. So they're in a, they're an affiliate of the Houston Astros. So they did this kind Very of throwback. Fitting. Yeah, they did this little throwback um uh prototype logo. So we can change um these uh streaks to any color you want and uh basically go from there. So uh, this is the front logo. Uh 
and then we can we can work the color of the hat too. So do you want to keep the same um, look and feel? Like we could do like a front uh, panel blue, back of it we can make it white. It's 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 totally up to you. Um, I can pull out a couple different colors that we can pick from. Yeah, I, I wonder. Do you, <clears throat> do you think it's best to pick the the background first or the? Yeah, I mean it's it's easier to to kind of color the hat first. That way we know um, yeah. what we're working with. Uh, let me pull some blues for you. So, so if we were to color this how you had it, so we would make this the navy. here on the visor button and then we can make it we can make the back part of it this mesh part you can make it white you can make it gray whatever you want um so let me show you let me show you what it would look like as a as a gray hat i know white Always looks good when it's brand new, but you know after a couple wears that thing gonna turn yellow. Yeah. So if we were to take this and make it a gray back. So this is what it would look like gray. Kind of like this. So you got the same kind of look, but it's already pre-worn. Uh, this would be the like an off-white color. Yeah, let's try that off white. Yeah, so it looks like that. I kind of like that off white. Yeah, I think so too. It's kind of weathered. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then in terms of the visor, the under visor, do you have a preference on what color that is? Most people usually opt for like a green or a gray, but that could be any color you want. Uh, let's see what the green does. Yeah. All right, perfect. Let me pull the green for you. Yeah. Yeah, that thing's pretty. Okay. All right. So here, the F, since it's already, since it's already a blue background, I'll change it to the navy. This, this F was going to have to change. Yeah. Polish. So we can make it a white. We can make it a silver. So the white. This would look silver. Because this will be the navy. I mean, I do have a. I do have a uh, like a darker gray Ford mm -hmm. truck. Oh yeah, that's awesome. So maybe we can kind of color match that. Like that. Uh, what color? Uh, I I don't know what. Yeah, let me pull some grays for you. So these are the lighter grays, and then darker. We go from here. It kind of works out. We can color match your car. Or your truck. So there's like pewters and different stuff like that. We can try any of these colors. Try that misty morning. Right there. Yeah. That looks right. And then you have uh, three color options for these stripes. One, two, three, plus the star. We can make that whatever you want. Um, 
I mean, we could. What do the stripes look like right now? Uh, right now they are. They are like a metallic blue, metallic green, and I think metallic gold is what it currently is. Um, I kind of like I, I like having that blue in there. Okay. So we'll leave, uh, we can leave the metallic blue in there. But pretty much any color you can think of, I can pull it and show you what it would look like. I mean, I feel like we need to put... Where's the hat? The hat's here. I can put it up against the hat for you. You can kind of, um, you can kind of see it. I feel like we need to put a red in there. Okay. Let's see. I'll show you a metallic red. So here's a metallic red. It's a little bit more shiny. And then there's regular reds. There's a lot of options for you that we can go through. So here's like a, a different reds. And then here's like you're even getting brighter over here. Sorry to kill you with too many options, but we can make it however you like. Uh so like a regular red would be like a scarlet. Yeah, I was gonna say let's try the scarlet. Yeah, that's a on, really popular one. On the green portion? Yeah, maybe on the green portion. Yeah. And then this gold, this could be like a like a white potentially. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like a white. That looks pretty badass. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's almost like a it's almost like a BMW logo, almost Empower. Yeah. And then this um, this star, we could leave it as silver. We could leave it as white. Uh, this would this would be in the navy, but this could be whatever too. So silver. Here's a lighter silver. Um. What would what would the uh... What would it look like with that navy? The navy? It would look like this. And we can, I can pull the hat for you. Get rid of this stuff on. Let me just pull the scarlet. they're I believe they're an Astros affiliate right now so we could put some Texas stuff there on the side too which would be cool so that's their logo the woodpecker okay affiliate and make sure that they're still yeah they're of the Houston so we could pull a couple things that have uh, Texas backgrounds to it uh, let me show you some options so we can keep it in Texas. So if, if you like any of these, we can we can use this logo on the side. <clears throat> I like that. Uh, I like the Colt 45s. Yeah. This one right here? The... No, the the one on the the other end, the two thousand one. Oh, this one. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So we can take that one, and we can color it. And we kind of did it. There you go. 
That's your first hat. <laughs> You're now a hat designer. That's cool, man. I like that. Yeah, this is fun. And that way, at least it ties back a little bit um, to where you're from. We got we we found a way to uh, sneak into Texas. There is uh is is San Angelo closer to to Houston or or to the the Dallas area? Um, it's closer to Dallas, but it isn't close. Okay, I mean it's <laughs> we're four and a half hours from Dallas. We're about six. Six and a half from Houston. Fair enough. We could do something based on the creator and use the initials TC if you like. Yeah. All right. So um you're you're in this role uh, in the upcoming movie, the creator. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience? Um and well working in that project and, and kind of how you, you chose to do that. Um, I, I, well, I didn't really have much of a choice <laughs> okay. uh, in the sense that it was, um, what was that when I had a, I was in, I was in Utah. That's what it was. Uh, I, I, I ended up having a, uh, a Zoom meeting with with Gareth, the director. Mm -hmm. um, I'd kind of heard a little bit about this. There was a possibility of a film that was going, but you know, I never got any information. And then um, they finally said, you know, they were setting it up, and they sent me the script, and the script was uh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, original, cool. Um, I mean, I like cried when I was reading it. I was I had tons of adrenaline when I was reading it. It was, it was just, a, it was an amazing script. And uh, I had watched, I mean, I, you know, I knew Rogue One, uh, mm -hmm. I, but I watched Gareth's first movie, Monsters. And you know, I mean, it was a complete indie that he did all of the VFX and um, it was a great movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you watching it. Um, and that movie basically got him, you know, I think he did Godzilla after that and then something else and then Rogue One. Um, but I had this zoom with him and, and, you know, I was thinking I'm one of at least 10 people that he's going to have this zoom with about this film. And, um, and then when we got done and he, you know, he, he was very generous and, um, I mean, I, you know, it was, it was a bit flattering, like him talking about the outsider and Ozark and whatnot in our zoom. And, uh, and then at the end he was like, I'd love for you to be a part of this. Uh, if you, if you want to. And I was like, I had just gotten an offer for a TV series. Um, I'm not blown on horn, but it was the, the first time I've had to make, I mean, I, I didn't really have to make a decision. Yeah. I knew just from the script that it was like I wanted to do this. I wasn't going to make as much money. Um, and, you know, who knows? You never know how it's going to turn out. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> the making of the film, I, I obviously went with the film. And one of the coolest experiences I've had making a movie, we shot it in Thailand. And it was a big budget movie, but with the most independent vibe, uh, you can imagine it was, uh, like Gareth is very, I, he's an amazing director, but he's 
like one of those directors that I love working with that um, he gave us so much freedom. Uh, and I got to work with, uh, you know, John David Washington, who is just such an incredible guy and the sweetest man, Allison Janney. Uh, I was kind of her sidekick in the film and she was, we kind of had the same days off. So we hung out all the time and I couldn't have had a better time with, with somebody. She was just so much fun to be with and um, fun to work with. And uh, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was an amazing experience. I would, Gareth is one of those directors that, if he ever asked me to do anything, I, without saying anything, I would say, yes, I'll do it. That's awesome. I mean, you would just know that he would, it, like, it's a good project, basically, just from yeah. taking it on. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, the the movie looks stunning. The The effects look amazing. It, it, it's one of those kind of like, and I'm not just saying that because you're on here, but, like, it's one of those, like, it looks like it's a must-see movie right away. Just, just, the, yeah. just from the trailers that I've seen. Um, yeah, no, it's it's going to be uh, I think it's going to be cool. I I, I wasn't able to make uh, a couple of screenings that they had Gareth had said, you know, if you're in L.A., please come to this. But Allison saw she went to one and she sent me a text that just like gushed and gushed and was like, I don't know how he made what he made but yeah. you know i i saw stuff in post-production when i would go in to do adr and you know what they had done with our vehicle was it was like whoa that's <laughs> unbelievable yeah uh or what you're looking you know what you were supposedly looking at and then you see it in post-production and it's like oh my god that's like it's so different right sells everything yeah 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 all right that's awesome so i pulled a couple things that we could potentially do so um tc uh the, the twin cities can also kind of stand for the creator i pulled um they're um they're kind of like a oops they're more popular uh, all-star game patches it kind of reminds me a little bit of like the cityscape oh yeah, yeah futuristic looking so i think that would be a good pairing yeah and then for uh the back i mean we could try depending on league approval but we could even try to throw on a thailand flag on the back if you really wanted to uh, and kind of cement it um we could use the regular mlb logo as well so totally up to you um but yeah i think it would be a cool kind of uh a piece for you to kind of remember your time on the film and uh we can hook it to the movie poster we can um kind of pull from the different stuff there or or you just even just uh freestyle it. it's it's totally up to you yeah i mean i love those colors of the movie poster mm -hmm. yeah so let me try to uh, pull some of those it's like a like a peach and almost like a teal let me let me uh let me see what we're working with here so <laughs> You could do something where the base of the hat is like black potentially and then we would get we would color the logos with the peach and the tidal wave yeah the other option would be to uh use the teal of the hat and then kind of use the peach as the under riser this is a little bit of a tougher wear, I think. The pastel colors. Wait, say it again. This is a bit more tougher colors to kind of pull off or to wear. Because it's yeah. so like it's so uh kind of pastel y, kind of Easter ish. But yeah. The other option would be keep it dark. And then we would use the bright colors in the logos. So let's see. So we're just gonna speed up this uh, process a little 
um, quicker for you guys. Uh, this was a really fun experience. Um, we're kind of coloring the front logos and the side patch to match the poster. We pulled as many colors as we could uh, from the uh, poster. And yeah, hope you guys are enjoying this video so far. Make sure you guys are dropping a like um, on the video. I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah. And that red for the... Uh... What what are these things called in the movie? You know, do you remember? They're kind of like cyborgs or like AI things, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure we called them. I mean, I was U.S. military. We just called them AI. I think mm. it's a it's. A, I think it's going to be a cool film, and it's. Uh, the fact that it's so relevant right now. Oh yeah, I mean, everyone's using AI right now. It's kind of crazy. Day. I was talking to my friend uh, who's from Illinois, and they said they just passed a law, or they just passed something internally where they can't use it to respond to like uh, customers. Oh really? Company. Yeah, yeah. Good for Illinois. So I don't know if it was, I don't remember if he said it was a law or it was an internal policy, but either way, uh, he's not allowed to use it for, um, for responses to his customers because he's in sales, but there's like ways to check now. Yeah. I would have been a terrible student if I had access to <laughs> Oh my God. <gosh. laughs> yeah. Like, oh, write me a book report on Hamlet, you know? Like, yeah. I, I don't even know. I kind of grew up in the Wikipedia age, where a lot of the universe, like the, a lot of the professors in universities, were like, "Don't use Wikipedia. It's not all. It's not real, or it's not accurate." So, it was even tough doing that. I think I was like the one of the last generations to really utilize like a library and stuff, free internet. I know it's kind of crazy uh, how I mean, I, I didn't I, I remember setting up an email when I was in college mm -hmm. like an you know it was internal my, it was at my at tamu edu email yeah that was just used to communicate within the I, I think I used it twice, maybe, in total at college. I don't, even, I, I didn't even know how to log in, and now it's everything is done that way. It's kind of nuts. I, I remember when I was in university. Um, I guess that's when Facebook started getting popular, and you actually had to have it like a university or college email to sign up for it. Like it wasn't that anyone could just get a Facebook. You had to yeah. be in school for that. Um, and, and for your under here, did you want to go with a gray, a green? Did you want to use something else? Uh, the here? Can we try that teal? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this Very is the bright, This is the brighter, and this is the darker. Yeah, I like that darker. Yeah, we could do that. Uh, did you want me to try to get the Thailand uh, flag approved, or did you want to use the regular MLB logo at the back? I Let's see if we can get the Thailand flag okay. approved. If not, then let's do the Major League Baseball logo. All right. I'm going to try. No guarantee. Sometimes they're iffy, the league licensing. They're going to think it's so random. <laughs> yeah. But I, I definitely have some hats with flags on the back. So uh, we'll try it. Yeah. And for flags, usually I'll just leave it the same color. We wouldn't really play with the flag because then it just means something totally different. But uh, yeah. Are you happy with this one? I like it. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why I like the T and the C that way instead of the other. Mm -hmm. But I do. Yeah. 
Yeah, as long as you like it, um, this is going to be a deeply personal one for you. But it also looks like a good hat, so I think uh, I think we did a cool job. But yeah, any changes before we lock this one in? No, let's lock it in. All right, perfect. We just uh, we just blitzed through four hats. I hope uh, <laughs> I hope this was worth the time for you. I had a lot of fun doing this. Yeah, no, it's uh, super fun doing this. Yeah, but uh, okay, all right. When does uh, when does the creator come up? It's like September twentieth, I believe. 29th. 29th. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Um, something I definitely gotta I gotta go see. Uh, I guess with the with the pandemic and everything, I guess everyone got used to not going out for a while. But you know, hopefully this is one that uh, gets people out in droves. Yeah, I hope so. I think I I think Gareth made a you know I, it was such a special little script and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know the, the production company uh, they were really wonderful New Regency they just kind of gave Gareth freedom to do what he wanted to do and um, yeah and they stuck to their word and you know because a lot of times there's higher up suits that are saying, no, we want this, we want this. And they let him, I, they just believed in him and uh, which is how I think film should be made. Yeah. Um, and he, uh, I think he, I think he's made a special film. I think it'll be, it'll be, it'll be a fun one and hopefully something that, he can do a do another one after this uh, in in this vein. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, you guys uh, t take home the top um, spot for the week. I think you guys are going against Saw Ten and Paw Patrol. So, <laughs> uh, Paw Patrol, <laughs> Paw Patrol. <laughs> yeah, different and demographic. Uh, um, yeah, so it couldn't yeah. be three yeah. different movies, but. Tell, tell everybody to go uh, watch Saw 1 through 9 first. Yeah, yeah. You can only watch Saw 10 if you've seen Saw if 1, seen through, one nine. through 9. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or else... At that point, you may have seen all of them. But... Yeah, exactly. I don't think they're going to be much different. Um, but yeah, I wish you um, nothing but um, luck and, and, and uh, a good fortune for the rest of the time. Um, I, I can't thank you enough for uh, coming on and spending some time with me. Uh, yeah, you. thanks, this man. Was fun. It's been been a lot of fun, and yeah. uh, thanks for 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 your ideas and um, getting these put together. Yeah, um, and then in a couple months we'll have something to wear. So make sure uh, you message me off to the side what hat size you wear, and uh, we'll get you taken care of. But, yeah, uh, I right. will. Until next right. time, we're signing okay. out, guys. Thanks, Leon. And there you have it. Uh, part one of the Mark Menchaca episode is over. I hope you guys enjoyed um, kind of getting to know him and his story. Um, and he was really generous with his time. We ended up recording uh, for a couple hours. These are the first two hats um, that we'll be showing. So this was the first and last hat. And uh, next week we'll unveil uh, the other two hats we worked on. Um, all four hats are being put into production uh, very soon. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Um, like the video, comment on it, let us know uh, which of these hats <clears throat> you like better and what you kind of thought. Uh, and let me know if you end up watching The Creator. It, it, again, it comes out uh, this Friday, the 29th. Um, I believe it's Thursday. But either way, September 29th. Uh, we're primed for a big weekend. Uh, big movies usually don't release in the fall, so this is uh, kind of interesting time. So 
yeah, again, thank you to Mark for taking some time out to spend uh, with me to actually design these hats. Um, uh, the writer strike is finally, um, the writers and actors strike, I think, is tentatively over. So uh, back to work he goes. But yeah, it was a great time to, you know, spend with him. I was kind of geeking out. And I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this episode as well. So until next time, I'm signing out. Peace. Brought to you by VFTV.